is absolutely phenomenal. Gosh. Welcome back to the channel. That's right, we have finally gotten to our next installment in our night vision series here on the channel. I have a link to all of our night vision reviews right here. Now, if you've been following us for a while, you'll know that I work very closely with Good Night Gear. They are great friends to the channel. And full disclosure, we are partnered with Good Night Gear. If you use promo code PLD10 at checkout, you will save 10% on your entire purchase site-wide. Now, despite the digital digital night vision market improving immensely over the last few years. Even good units like the NVG30 and the NVG50 suffer from very similar problems. Those being sometimes a subpar refresh rate within the device itself, a optical or visual lag time from moving to actually seeing the image move. And the biggest issue that I have discovered, the need for an external IR light to really maximize the utility of those devices, especially in those extreme low ambient light situations. Well, there's a new player on the field. And to even suggest that this is competing with the more budget tier digital night vision would be very unfair. This is the ADNV G14SE. Spoilers, this is what I consider the premium digital night vision device. Whereas the NVG30, the NVG50 come in between $400 and $550, the G14SE costs $1,800. Another quick disclosure for this video, I bought this with my own money. This was not sent to me. This was not given to me. I am not being paid to do this video. Actually, there are going to be two parts of this review. Part one is today. This is going to be a review of the device as a standalone monocular. Part two is coming a little further down the line and it'll be a more tactical use case. Can't wait for the powers that be to get all over that one. So let's get into what makes the G14 SE so special. Surprisingly, it doesn't have a whole lot of special features. Unlike a lot of the other devices that I have reviewed on the channel, it doesn't have a bunch of different bells and whistles. It doesn't have different filter settings that you can change the color of the view screen, and it doesn't have an onboard recording system. Now, some people may think that is a disadvantage over something like an Opsin or an NVG30 or NVG50. However, after reading the comments from a lot of people and in my own experience outside of content creation, I don't really care if this device can record. If the money can be saved by cutting out an onboard recording system and put into other features just to make the product better at its primary function, I am all for that. And that's exactly what ADNV has done. They have made a digital night vision monocular and that's it. A lot of the recordings in this video are actually done with an external recording device. I'm not going to really get into that. You can get one. It does not come with the G14 SE. I'm going to try to include footage that was recorded both with the external recording device as well as having the camera behind the eyepiece because the recorded footage is nowhere near as clear and high resolution as what you see through the device itself. It looks good, but it is nothing compared to what you see first person. So to start off, it has an incredibly advanced IR sensor. It is leaps and bounds above the NVG30 and the NVG50. This allows for a very clear picture even in environments where there is very little ambient light, which cuts out the need to have an external IR emitter or a very powerful IR emitter that's built in, this has worked immaculately in several extremely low light settings. As I said at the beginning, another major issue with digital night vision is a lower frame rate. A lot of devices use 30 frames a second. The MVG 30 and 50 use 50 frames a second, which is fantastic by comparison. The G14 SE has a refresh rate of 100 frames a second. 100 
hurts. And I've seen comments on my past videos and other people's videos, people that suggest that our eyes are really only trained to see 24 frames a second. That's why DVDs and Blu-rays are in 24 frames a second. You can argue with me all you want, but that's not how our eyes work. Now there is a point of diminishing returns where you really don't see it as much, and then you're paying even more and more for each individual hertz increase. But a 100 hertz refresh rate is absolutely noticeable over 50 hertz and a 50 hertz refresh rate is very noticeable over 24 hertz. In short, the picture quality of this device is smooth as butter, and I wish that could translate to this video, but we can only really do 60 FPS on YouTube. It is something to behold. And just to show we're not just being crazy here, One aspect of the viewing experience that I thought was gonna be a slight downgrade from the G14 to the NVG30 or the 50, the screen resolution in this is 800 by 600. It is an 800 by 600 OLED versus in the NVG30, it's a 1080p OLED and in the NVG50, it's a 1440p. OLED screen. But given twice the refresh rate, the incredible light sensing package, and the all-round electronic package in this device, it feels like a completely different ball game than the NVG30 and NVG50. Like other monoculars, you have front and rear focal adjustments, and I'm going to tell you, as soon as you get this dialed in, it is crystal clear. Now, as I've said, and as I've shown in the B-roll, the picture quality and the just visuals of this device are fantastic. None of the footage that you have seen is using the built-in IR light. And I'm going to tell you now that this IR light is not that powerful and it isn't designed to be. This is included to be an admin light for very low ambient light settings so that you can be doing something at close range. That said, it is also completely adjustable through the menu system, which we'll talk about in a little bit. As far as how this is powered, there are several options and I love this. I currently have mine set up to use C123 batteries or 16340 batteries. However, it comes with an extender for the battery cage in which you can use 18650, the larger lithium rechargeable batteries. That's pretty neat. I personally don't like the aesthetic of how far out it sticks, but that's again just my personal preference. The other option is to use an external battery pack and you can just use a typical battery bank that's mounted to the back of your helmet. In the box, it comes with this nine pin cable that would connect to the front and then you have a USB plug that can run to any typical battery bank, which will then further extend the life of this headset. I really like this design because it's not proprietary. I don't have to have something that's designed specifically for this unit, as long as I have this cable. <laughs> Lastly, the mounting solution. You get pretty typical mounting hardware. It does come so that if you want to spend nearly $4,000 on a binocular setup, you absolutely can. I have the other bar removed. Maybe someday I'll get a second one of these. <laughs> uh, I'm saving up for something that goes pew. The last of the specs features that I wanna go over is the menu system. The menu system on the G14 SE is pretty simple. There is a button at the back of the device that you just push. It brings up a menu and then you rotate the button and you can go through all of the options. You have light on and off, meaning the admin light. You can then control the brightness of the light, the brightness of the screen. You can then change the refresh rate from 50 frames a second to 100 frames a second. You can then take photos and record. Then you can control the screen's contrast. And lastly, you can adjust the sharpness, which I haven't really noticed that much of a difference when I use that or have changed that but you do have the option to make it a smoother image or a sharper image. In short, the menu system is appropriately minimalistic and it works fantastically. So, conclusions. If you are looking for arguably one of the very, very best digital night vision 
devices on the market. I highly recommend checking out the G14 SE. This thing is phenomenal. It's not the same as analogs. I'm not trying to say that, but for $1,800, 10% off if you use PLD 10 at checkout, you really aren't going to be able to do much better. Now I'm not saying that good deals on used night vision don't exist, but for a new product that is going to work versus something that has a bit more of a shelf life, this is pretty hard to beat for the money. Now, if you understandably can't spend $1,800, I'm still going to absolutely recommend the NVG30 or the NVG50. And if you're on a really tight budget, check out the Night Fox Pro, especially after the update that they just did to their firmware. It makes it so much more usable. But I consider, as a civilian, the G14 SE as damn near professional grade. I really want to get this out into the field for pest control, but we can talk about that a little more in part two. This thing is just incredible. Let me know if you have a G14 SE. Let me know down in the comment section what other night vision tech and kit you'd like to see on the channel. I've got another video hopefully coming in the next month on a device that was sent to me. I'm not too hopeful about it, but I want it to work really badly. I really want it to work because the idea of it is pretty neat. Thank you again for all the support you've shown the Phantom Llamas Den. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed and you've hit the bell icon to get notifications. YouTube's been doing some odd stuff with their algorithm lately. And I've talked to several other content creators. They've noticed it too. Thank you so much for your support. You are the reason we're able to make any of this stuff happen. We look forward to showing you what we've got coming in the very near future. We have a lot of content slated. That's gonna do it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing to the Phantom Llamas Den. Go check us out on X, Instagram, phantomlamasden.com. Go follow us on Twitch where we game and do crazy stuff on the weekends. As always, don't take life too seriously and make it a great day.